Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Gimslix and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Hopefully you like that little introduction there. We are setting off immediately with honestly quite an ugly craft. Um, I tried to I tried to give it some justice by giving it that nice little cinematic shot, but it, it, it wasn't having it. Anyway, the the uh, the goal for today is something to do with Hydrus. I'm not sure whether we'll be uh, landing on it, but we might be landing on Hydron. So it's either Hydrus or it's Moon. So today is basically the day to get some funds because we're quite low, and some science. Like, yeah, again, it's not, it's not a very nice looking craft. <laughs> that's just that's really ugly. I was really close to the weight limit, which is what kind of had had me scale it all down. Um, but other than that, I think it'll do all right. I think it'll do okay. Uh, in the editor, Kerbal Engineer said that it had 9,000 Delta V, and I think that's more than enough for uh, getting a transfer to Hydra. So we should be able to come back from that as well. But uh, we'll just see how that goes so far. The, the overall goal is to get funds and upgrade this launch pad, because the rockets that I'm launching now are way too heavy. And uh, unfortunately, there's no, no cool Easter eggs on Hydra's as much as there is on Ash, but uh, fortunately for everyone at home watching, um, you're not going to get gnomed. <laughs> I was quite proud of the uh, the one from last episode, I thought that one was quite funny. Um, I'm sure you all didn't mind. Now uh, something I want to do in future episodes is um, actually making music videos in the style of Matt Lau. Now I have done that before. In, uh, in the form of my Mark III VTOL aircraft that went to Hydrus and um, what what's the other one that I did? I think I sent some sort of uh, some sort of mining vessel to Hydrus that landed on the floating islands. Uh, I wanna I wanna implement some of that into this series because I well, I'm sure most people are gonna get fed up with me talking for 20 minutes. So uh, five of those minutes could be spent way more enjoyable watching like a music video-esque sort of thing so one one of the launch because I tend to do two launches per episode now I could do one of the launches as a commentary and then the better launch whichever one that might be can be in the style of a music video and, um, I'm only going to do that for crafts that actually look presentable for example this one is not one of those candidates this is a very ugly craft and should not exist <laughs> I've made worse, and I'm probably going to end up making even worse in this series alone, but uh, I am not proud of this craft. If it gets us to the surface of Hydrus, I'll be very impressed, but I do not have very high hopes of it, so Hydron is probably a more realistic target. Now, I don't have a reaction wheel on this, so this is going to take a, an awful long time to manoeuvre. <laughs> I, I couldn't even put a reaction wheel on because I was limited by weight. I couldn't even put extra fins on the bottom of the craft because of the weight limit. So, uh, yeah. Budget cuts, I suppose. Three, two, one. Uh, can we say hello to Hydrus? Oh, we should do some science around. I think it will say the Barry Center. I'm not... yeah, the Barry sensor, that's fine. Alright, so, time to adjust our orbit. How much Delta V do we have, because it's the decision whether to land or not. So, if we were to decouple the landing stage, we would have an extra 1,566 on the swivel engine to take off. Uh, that should get us into orbit of Hydrus as well, and then that stage should come back. So I think we can make a landing on Hydrus. I genuinely don't know where it is, which is slightly worrying. So how how badly we're going to hit it? Very badly. Radial out. We will be cutting this very close. What's our periapsis? Two thousand two hundred seventy-two. Oh, the ground is feeling rather close today. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this. I might try boosting it up in post, but we came extremely close. Also, the updated terrain textures on Hydron. Hooray! <laughs> Alright, so. Maneuver time. 
shrouded in cloud, you really can't make out that much of the terrain at the moment. Uh, we are going to be falling probably nose first at this rate. But uh, we, you can we can see we are slowing down. It is quite a forgiving atmosphere. You don't overheat too much. I'm going to I'm going to deploy the landing gear just for that extra surface area to slow us down further. And I might open this. I don't think we're in too much danger right now. Just so that I can collect the science and do some in the atmosphere. It'd be nice. This is where X science would come in useful. Or I could just set the camera to chase. But you know, low pressure data anyway. <laughs> I want to land somewhere near the mountains to show off the floating islands. Now if I don't land near any, unfortunately we'll have to look at them in a future episode. But for the most part we are landing in uh, what looks like a floating island region. Anyway, for those of you who are not familiar with the planet mod, uh, floating islands spawn near the mountains. Uh, so do the crashed terraformers and the large floating islands. Now, the large floating islands I don't refer to as islands, they're more just boulders. But uh, if we see some, you'll know what I mean. I, I really do hope we see some at this point. <laughs> There's a fair amount here, actually. Uh, still, none of the big ones. I really hope we find some of the large ones, but maybe that's a teaser for, next, for the next episode. And if we don't find any, I'll probably flash some up on the screen. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're finding any of the, the large floaters, but it's all fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this parachute there we go okay so we're not going to be landing on one eh, for, for the sake of fuel I am not going to uh, I'm not going to try and land on one I probably could just go up and cross but for the sake of fuel no <laughs> so it's, it's not it's not the best view because we didn't find the biggest floating islands in the crash terraformers but we will find them in a future episode because there will be uh, rover missions to hydras there'll be plane missions to hydras it's one of my favorite planets and so hydras is going to get a lot of attention and it looks like we're landing on relatively flat land as well which is always a bonus i'd rather land on flat land and see no large floating islands than landing on mountains and seeing a few and an explosion. <laughs> now it's not the flattest of land, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the engines just to slow our descent a little bit. Hopefully, get a, quite a soft landing. And uh, if we're lucky, we should be stable. Perfect. And we need to point 90 degrees in order to set off, so we're gonna have to go this way. I think it's time to do an EVA report from Hydrus's floaty lands. We will store the experiment, we will turn RCS on, do an EVA report from flying over them, we'll smack into the ground, plant a flag, actually science data from the surface of Hydrus, there we go, plant a flag. I don't know why that wasn't showing up to begin with but here we go we've planted a flag on Hydrus and uh, I'm just gonna call it no large floats here And that, that's pretty self-explanatory. There are no large floating islands here. Now the gravity of Hydrus is about 0.33, so it's 33% of the uh, Kerbins. So RCS just about works. Now I did originally want it to be a Juno sort of planet, but um, I realized and we're going to go straight up and not do a gravity turn at all. But um, after that I realised, hmm, let's make it a Titan analogue. And it's not its not a perfect analogue, but it does have methane oceans, and it does have uh, a thick atmosphere, and it's yellow. <laughs> I guess that's the biggest part of it, it's yellow, which kind of makes it sort of like Titan. Um, but yeah, for a, for a Hydra's landing, and this is the only mission 
uh, that will be in this episode unfortunately because it's such a long mission that's why I want to do the music video thing because then I can have a 15 minute commentary section and a 5 minute uh, music video section I think that's a good idea and I think that would yeah, I think that's good now we are going to be cutting it well actually if you look at our total delta V it's actually rising <coughs> um, our aquapsis is 25,000 but I can't do a gravity turn yet I simply can't because <laughs> Hydrus' atmosphere is so thick we're 15 kilometers up and it's not even past halfway whereas on road this would be in the blue dark blue area say goodbye to Hydrus' floating islands because we are but we're not going to be gone for that long, we will be coming back soon. So, comment down below. Um, would you like to see me return to Hydrus to go to Hydron, which is its moon? So basically, Hydron or a different planet, which would be something like Scathe, Scathe's moon, which is Skindo, which is like the rainbow planet. Um, so, basically, Hydrus or Scathe, yet again. But this time it will be the moons. I don't feel confident enough to land on skis and return just yet. I don't think we have the equipment to do that. We might do. It's only an extra 1,500 Delta V, I think. So if I have enough funds to upgrade the launch pad and increase the maximum weight, it should be fair to say that I could land and return from skis. But I also want to focus on space stations and a communications network, which is... is, is not as exciting as a manned landing mission, but it's something you kind of have to do. Now I will tell you guys a little bit of lore about Hydrus. Um, it's not mentioned in the descriptions much, all it says is that it is a magnetic anomaly, but if you put two and two together, you realise the crashed terraformers on Hydrus look like the terraformers on Lua. And that's because the Kerbals uh, reverse engineered those that are on Hydrus and built them on Lua for their own colonisation purposes. And um, obviously Hydrus was not terraformed. It's, it's it's a very unstable world and its description mentions that there is a magnetic anom anomaly. And um, well, that's because the terraforming failed. But who started the terraforming of Hydrus before the Kerbals got here? I don't know. Maybe that's some more content coming in a future update. Stay tuned. <laughs> so, the, the way Beyond Home has been developed, uh, I released all the planets and everything from day one, all completed. I did a couple of tweaks later on. Um, but then the lore, I am building into it as the updates progress. So the people who have been here since day one have the uh, the opportunity to look forward to the updates with more lore, some more easter eggs that point towards lore, except the gnome, that's just a bit of fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so we need to transfer from Hydrus. And hello, road. We are back. Now then, we've just got to be a little bit efficient. We've got to kill our velocity a fair bit. So we have 600 meters per second of delta V. Is that going to get us into the atmosphere? Probably not. Yeah, we would have been absolutely fine. But it's it's time we do our first nighttime landing. Unless I could just get out and push. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that though. Alright, so that mission was it was inefficient, but it was around eight thousand eight hundred delta V. Around. It could it could be made probably eight thousand, probably a bit less than eight thousand delta V. But for a manned mission to hide us in back, that's a, quite a safe margin, I reckon. This is getting heated up a fair bit. Now we're good. There's our other stage behind us blowing up or in front. Nah, I don't think I don't think I can wait. So where are we landing boys? <laughs> That's a lot of drag. 
Where are we landing? In the water or on the land? Looks like it's on the land. Yep, we are landing in mountains. <laughs> I'm going to warp today to see what it looks like when we land. It looks relatively flat, actually. I think we got quite lucky. We're not going to be... Uh... No, I, I might brighten this up in post, which is going to add to my render time. Sad. Um, but, uh... I reckon we're going to lose the heat shield when we land here. No? Well, wow. Okay. But yeah, we got quite lucky that we weren't rolling down a hill. Except we are now, but I'm trying to kill the velocity. I think our reaction wheels will hold it. Yeah. And we managed to do that. Only losing 50 electric charge. Now clearly, um... Can you stop rolling, please? Oh, God. Okay. Now I'm going to warp to morning and see where we landed. Nice. So, not a massive mountain range, more like some rolling hills. And welcome back to road, I suppose. So, that was a brilliant mission. Also, terrain textures, yeah, I'm going to be plugging that the entire time. <laughs> so, let's see how much how much science we got from this. I've been recording for about an hour. Uh, so, yeah, only one mission this time. I'm really pushed for time. School school work and stuff. 233 science so that looks like next time we are able to go to um, Scave. Now we've upgraded the launch pad there. Let's see what science we can get just before we end. Okay. Aviation nah, that's not really something I'm focusing on just yet. Uh, as for heavier rocketry that gives us the main sail engine and the twin bore for 160 science. I think that's something I'm going to get. Um... I don't have enough for anything else except the aviation one, but a target to get next time could be specialised control. I don't think we need that just yet. Space exploration? No, I don't think we need that just yet either. Um, honestly, I'd probably go for advanced construction because that gives us some fairings. Just, ah, so you need 90 for that. Okay. And then we're going to get into some strategia next time as well. As for mission control, it's sending us all to Hydrus. So, comment down below, where do you want to go? Do you want to go to Hydron? Because I have contracts for Hydron. Um, this seems relatively nice, and that seems relatively... You know what, I might go to Hydron. Anyway, uh, comment down below either way, because if I get more people saying scathe, then I'll go to scathe, and I'll keep the contracts as like a... a on standby, because the duration is 22 years. <laughs> Um, so anyway, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this episode, it might be a slightly longer one depending on how much I've edited it down, uh, I've been recording for an hour, so <laughs> I've been talking for a very long time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy watching that, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing, that's always cool as well, and I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>